Thanks for tuning in, everyone, to today's Fighters Mindset podcast with Iggy McGowan and Rocky Ogden, two very, very successful men in their careers. We're going to split the session into two parts. We'll be chatting with Iggy first and Rocky a little bit later in the convo. A little bit of a background on Iggy. Iggy is a pro fighter based up in Queensland. He's also a PT and a napropath, and he's a mindset coach. It's great to have you on the show, Iggy. How's things going today, mate? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me, Dwayne. It's great to be on. Mate, I know you've been flat chat with your clients uh, at the moment, so we all really appreciate you um, giving us your time today. Um, with your with your schedule, like your daily schedule, mate, you're doing a lot of things with the PT, with the adjustments, uh, mindset, all that kind of stuff. What do you find actually takes up the most amount of your, your time? The majority of my work is around mindset. So it's, I work with people in a mentoring role and work with people on perfecting their mind, you know, using their mind as the powerful tool that it is rather than their mind using them. And um, do you find that, that that part of things comes into your, your PT work and the napropath work as well, just by nature yeah. of having those relationships? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it is. It, it's all one thing. This is it. So whether it's healing the body, you know, it all begins in thought. Okay, these, you know, people have these fearful thoughts that end up getting trapped within their flesh. And, you know, so it's a matter of resolving these issues within people's thinking in order to get their body sorted. And it's the same, obviously, when training, uh, when training people, you know, as you know yourself, it's all a matter of getting people to really understand how to use their mind in a powerful way to get the most out of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the trick, isn't it? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, with the, with the mindset coaching, um, you've, uh, you've coached a lot of notable people um, both locally and internationally. Um, One of them being obviously Carnage, Nathan Corbett, um, who, you know, 11 time world champion. He's uh, certainly, conditioned in the game we'll just uh bring up a few images here for you guys so nath was um was one that you you coached um and then young brooke cooper um next to him there who's accomplished a lot um at a very very young age um how is it working with those two guys Iggy? look i absolutely love working with people that have you know such an incredible physical ability you know like these guys that you've mentioned you know they're absolute machines physically and what really brings it all together is when they when they harness their mind and when they can use their mind in a powerful way so because yeah. a, a lot of the time look doesn't matter what level people are at their mind at times can unless it's disciplined can go off track and they can start doubting themselves uh, they can get in their own way so yeah, it, look, it's fantastic to, to really see people, you know, on any level operate at their best and, you know, f- fulfill their full potential. Yeah, absolutely. Um, two other people that you, that you worked with, uh, the Farrells, the Fighting Farrells. So yep. Eddie and Brooke. Um, Brooke fought on one championship Friday just gone. Um, she had a, had a loss, I believe. Um, how important is it to, I guess work through stuff even after a fight if we're if we're just looking at you know fighting and training and stuff when we do suffer these um losses whether it be in a fight or in life how important is it to kind of work through that stuff um for for upstairs yeah look absolutely it that's where the gold is so it's it's this understanding that there is no loss that once the lessons are learned that you know there's gold in that and, and that's really when you learn the most is through these, you know, through these losses, but you don't allow them to defeat you mentally. So yeah. you really reflect on, you know, where you can improve, what you did well, but what you need to work on. And you take that and you use it as motivation to move forward and, you know, put it toward the next, the next target, the next fight, whatever it is. 
Yep. But it is that that understanding of not, you know, not beating yourself up, not staying stuck in, you know, feeling miserable about it. And yep. Brooke, Brooke's fantastic. Brooke has an, an amazing attitude. Obviously, there's going to be, you know, disappointment, you know, after, especially if you get stopped. But Brooke's attitude is, is really fantastic. And it's what she's put in, you know, over years now is to develop this mindset where, you know what, no, it's all learning. On, on I go. And, and absolutely, this one, was it last night or the night before? Friday, uh, before? yeah. 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 That, that absolutely, you know, won't stop Brooke. You know, she will be back, you know, and better than ever. Yeah. Is it something that you need to continually train? 100%. 100%. Look, the mind is no different to the body. It's not like you get to a point you know, when training physically and go, oh, I, ne- I don't have to train anymore. I've, I've, mastered, <laughs> yeah. I've mastered fighting. You know, that's yeah. it. Um, yeah. that, that's not it. Mastery is a continual process. And you've got, to, you've got to keep showing up in the gym. You've got to keep putting in the work, you know, with discipline and repetition. And when it comes to the mind, it, it's no different. It's something that must be integrated. So it's something that you've got to train daily, you know, and not just about fighting, but in your day-to-day life. It, it's, it's conditioning yourself to, to open up to challenge and embrace challenge and, you know, to be able to speak to yourself in strength. Yep, yep, completely get it. Um, <clears throat> over the years, um, for, for you guys uh, tuning in, Iggy and I trained together um, quite a while ago up in Queensland. Um, and I know there were plenty of times where I'd hit you up for advice and, you know, what do I do with this? How do I handle this? Or, you know, um, which is one of the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get you on is because I've found you personally, one of the most um, positive people um, that I've come across, even in the face of face of adversity. Um, and, And that's a real testament to you. Um, and the things that you've achieved with your with your life and your business, um, so I I wanted to talk a little bit about um, about infusion. Um, it's a it's a story that I love. Um, uh, it, it blew me away when I when I first um, heard about it, and then I've recited the story to so many people over the years um, yeah. because. Uh, Maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll hand it over to you to talk about it. Um, but basically, um, for guys at home, Infusion, um, it was a super heavyweight um, tournament held over in Thailand, um, which which you got an invite to, Ig. Yep. A short notice invite? Yeah, it definitely was short notice. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> uh, you know, 48 hours at the most. Yep. yep. Um, so, uh, you know, he just, he took the fight, he jumped on a plane, and over to Thailand to train and, and fight in a super heavyweight um, tournament. And might I point out too, Iggy is not super heavyweight by, <laughs> by any means, right? No. Um, I think you had to give away quite a bit of weight to, um, to compete in that. Can you tell us, mate, um, just tell us a little bit about um, that story, like the call up and, and the training and how things went um, for you from there? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'd thought, I think, a week and a half prior and the fight ended in the first round that one and yeah I'd been sparring a lot with with carnage in the lead up to it and I was feeling you know invincible I was I was really pumped to have a good fight and that fight yep. before it it finished really quick where I stopped the opponent and I got back into the gym you know on the Monday and I was like just give me someone that won't break <laughs> I was just really keen to, to, you know, to go the distance and have a, have a hard fight. Yep. And anyhow, on the Thursday, I pulled up in the driveway at home, you know, about 9.30 at night. And I had a phone call from Julie Kitchen, uh, you know, over in the UK. And she said that there was this, you know, heavyweight elim- eliminator happening. And would I be interested in fighting in it? And I was like, yeah, so when is this? And she said, oh, it's... Yeah, you know, it's in. It starts in in two days, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know who you are. I don't know who <laughs> is. You know, and she said, oh, look, I know it's a big ask, but you know, and I said, oh, and I'm not a super heavyweight. You know, I'm 
fairly a heavyweight. Like I was yep. you know, 90 kilos. And I uh, said, okay, well, I need to know within the next 30 seconds because I'm about to get on a plane. And if you are, wow. I have to book your ticket. And so I said, okay, I'm in. I'll do it. And he said, oh, really? She was more shocked, you know, than, than me. <laughs> Said, oh, really? I said, yep, I'll do it. And so anyhow, you know, quickly chucked some things in the suitcase and was on a plane flying over, you know, within a matter of hours. And then once I got there, I uh, was, you know, it all happened very quickly. Was checked in at like midnight, you know, had a few hours sleep and was told six o'clock in the morning, there'll be a group training where everyone, you know, will be training on their own. And then from there, people will be put into four different teams and matched up for the first lot of fights. Yep. And so got up in the morning, was excited, you know, first time in Thailand, had a look around, you know, while training and just sort of sized up, you know, and, and they're all monsters, mind you. They're, <laughs> all, they're all super heavyweights. And I didn't know who any of them were because I, don't, I didn't follow that weight division because yep. it wasn't my weight division. It wasn't your weight division, yeah. No, but, you know, so looked around and, you know, got a fair read of who, uh, you know, who would have been the favourite, who the one was that no one wanted to fight, etc. So after that, you know, initial training, they lined us all up. I was third in line and they said, okay, so you get a choice. You can either choose to be matched up by the, by the host or uh, you can choose to challenge someone. So the first two guys, they said they just wanted to be matched up. So they got matched up with another fighter. Then they asked himself. And I said, yeah, I'd like to challenge someone. They said, okay, who's that? And I said, Daniel Sam. And they all went, oh, like they're people <laughs> laughing. Everyone's shocked. Like, what, what, like this? Yep. And because Daniel Sam was who I'd picked out as would have been the one that everyone feared, the one that no one wanted to fight. He was by far the biggest there. He's an absolute monster. Yep. This huge, big black man. And looks like John Coffey off a of Green Mile. <laughs> yeah, he does, doesn't he? He does. And uh, so, yeah, and that, so we were matched up. And, yeah, then, you know, a few nights later, had that fight. Yeah. Let's, um, let's, uh, let's put things into perspective. Take a look at this next picture here. So <laughs> the, the image on the left is me and Iggy. So everyone everyone watching, you know the size of me, right? And that's Iggy compared to me. And then have a look at Iggy standing next to um, Daniel yeah. Sam on the right. Like he, he's, a he's an absolute monster. <laughs> absolute monster. What was going through your head when you when you called him out? Like most people, most people would go, would, would look for for perhaps the easy way, the the easiest person, the person they could they they thought they could beat potentially and progress through the tournament yeah. uh, but you've gone right to the top at the start look i just this is it this is the thing this is my mentality is if i'm going all the way over to thailand and you know what yeah he's mine like i want that why not you know that's that's yep. the thing is it's like why not like come on like i'm here not going to be looking for an easy fight yep that one there give me that yep yeah. Does, that, does that answer your question? That's a, yeah, it's incredible. Look, Take to, a look. To, to me, you know, he represented people's fear, right? That's what yeah. people, like, to, he really did, like, some of people's fear, this huge, big monster, yeah. you know? And most people would run and hide from the monster or do anything to avoid that. But this is how I live my life and it's a choice. And that is that, no, no, you face it and you realize that there is nothing to fear. That fear yeah. itself, it's an illusion. And that once you face it, you can transform it. You transform in the process and everyone wins. So it's just thinking that that's a, that's a gold nugget right there is a fear is an illusion. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because it's all these what ifs, that people go into, you know, it's, it's all this, it's this mind made movies and stories as to what if this happens? What if this happens? What if, you know, yeah. <laughs> one in that situation could be, what if one of those knees hits me in the, in the head, my head, will, <laughs> yeah. my head will explode. 100%. And you know what? 
but but this is the thing is like what if i knock him out what if i catch him what if you know there's rather than getting caught up in all the what ifs it's a matter of dealing with what is when you stay dealing with what is you're always up to it you're always capable to respond and deal simply with what is right now yeah. but what if is just a dream and you can never deal with that yep yeah. Yeah. How do people, how do people stop the what ifs though? It, it's so it's by disciplining your attention. It's by bringing yourself back to being where you are. So ultimately that that's the key to everything. That's what fearlessness is, is when your mind inhabits your body, when you up, when you are where you are rather than being off in thought. So one of the quickest ways to come back to being where you are is through the breath. So by breathing, you know, most people have no idea how to breathe correctly. Yeah, right. You know, most people don't. Most people, they're not even aware of how they're breathing. And this yeah. gets revealed in training. You see this when, when you're there, especially when people go to spa or even when you're hitting them with the pads initially. People will hold their breath, start, yeah, looking, yeah. At, start looking down at the ground. So that's their, their, their fearful reaction, which makes yeah. them do that. The people do this in life all so when challenges come along, they, they hold their breath, they make themselves smaller, okay, so their posture weakens. And, you know, that holding of the breath clouds the mind. It creates brain fog, puts the body into a fear state. Then people start going into a story within their thinking. Oh, no, I'm getting hit. This is bad. Oh, no, I'm going to lose. And this story yeah. then creates more, you know, fearful. Fear. Uh, yeah, more fear within the body and ultimately brings about people's defeat. Yeah. So how, you know, do you eliminate the what ifs is by coming back to what is, by coming back to being in your body. So yeah. anytime if you ask yourself a simple question, what is happening right now that is a problem? If you look around yourself right now, not, not in an hour, not in you know, a day, not next week, but if you look around and you ask yourself, what is happening right now that is a problem? Right the yeah. answer, there's nothing. There's nothing happening. There, there, there may be a challenge, but you, you respond to that challenge. You deal with it. Okay, the only problems are these mind-made projections into the future. Yep. That's a really good way of looking at it because you're right. You're spot on. Spot on. Look, this is the one, one analogy that I give. Is, okay, even if someone comes through the door right now with a machete, to try and take my head off, that's still not a problem. Okay, it's a it's yeah. a challenge that I'll just respond to yeah. if it if it happens. But if I sit here and and start thinking, sometimes someone's going to come through that door. Someone's going to come through that door, and I do that over days. Well, that creates a problem. Okay, yeah. like within my thinking, and it creates this fear state. Whereas when something occurs, you simply respond to it. Yeah, incredible. Let's talk a little bit about um, about uh, training um, and fight camps. So, w without without sugarcoating things, um, some of you guys listening know this. Some of you will have no idea, but we'll try and make it relatable to everyone. Fight camp goes for six weeks, roughly, maybe eight weeks, depending on the amount of time before a lead up to a fight, and. Honestly, it is one of the most grueling, exhausting processes that you can go through. Um, the training becomes monotonous. Um, your mind gets fried. Your body's exhausted because you're training sometimes two times, three times a day. Your nutrition's got to be on point. You can't cheat. You've got to deal with work. You've got to deal with partners, um, kids, all that kind of stuff. And then you've got your, you've got your coach screaming at you, I want more, I want more, I want more. Um, and, and I've seen this quite a few times over the last five years being a coach, uh, putting people through those paces. Some people simply just have enough and they go, no, I can't do it. I, I, I'm going to give up. Um, that's a fight camp situation. But I, I also see um, similarities in, you know, in gradings, in normal training sessions um, and I know this stuff happens in life as well because sometimes life gets hard and people are like, well, this is difficult. I can't do it. I quit. 
um, how would you, like if you were going to give someone advice, whether it be a fighter or a person struggling in the workplace, for example, when they get to that point where they're like, I can't do it anymore. Um, I, you know, their, their body's telling them that they, they can't, but inside they actually can. They just, they don't believe it. How, how would you kind of, what would you say to someone in that scenario? Absolutely. So it's important to understand that the mind controls the body and you control your mind. Now, most people don't realize that, but that is, that's a fact. Okay. The mind controls the body. So if you're saying to yourself, I can't do this, I can't go on, then your body's going to follow. Okay. The body is like the horse and your mind is the, the reins. Okay. And you're the rider. So it's a matter of taking control over those reins, taking control over what you're saying to yourself. So if you're continually saying, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I can't go on, well, guess what? You're going to feel exhausted and you're not going to go on. So yes, of course, things can be tiring and there can be a lot there, especially in fight camp. And yes, it happens in life as well when there's a huge demand on what you have to be doing. But it's a matter of conserving energy where, wherever necessary and, and wherever possible. And so one of the biggest drains in energy is people's thinking. That, yeah. that's, what, that's what brings people undone. I don't care who you are. You see, there's, there is always more in the tank. And, you know, people watching know that that little voice in the head wants to stop and then when you have your trainer say to you come on you know 10 more what do you know you, you get 10 more out okay yeah. so they're, they're being they're being the voice of strength that's the role as a as a teacher as a trainer is to, is to pull more out of you yeah but what has to happen is people have to learn through that through that relationship to then have that voice in their own head to then exactly. be able to then be able to command more out of themselves that's that's what it is. That's why I always say to people, like I'm I'm a guide. I'm a guide. I'm here to be the voice of reason and the voice of strength until that voice grows within you. Yep. And but that's it. You the, you have to take control over that voice and start to command more out of yourself. So rather than having the thought, I can't do this, that must be replaced with how do I do this? Yep. How will I do this? Because it's, it's your way of thinking that determines what action you're going to take. So if, if you start asking a different question, like how, how will I do this? And it might be, okay, I'm going to, you know, start to structure things differently. I'm going to breathe more. You know, you'll be able to look at ways in which you can get it done in a, in a, with a better strategy than what you've been doing. Yep. Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? When you break it down and look at it like that. Um, it sounds so simple to do, but in that moment, it's like, I can't do it. But it's just making those tiny changes, isn't it? That's it. And that's one of the biggest things, Brandy, when people say, I can't do it, I can't do it. I just say to people, if you say so, because yeah. this is it, you, you are creating it and you're yep. commanding yourself. So if you, you know, I had someone, a client last week, I was getting them to do box jumps only onto a very small step. And this this woman was standing there saying to us, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And yeah. it's like, okay, if you say so. And then, you know, within a very, over a few minutes, turn that voice around. It's got her saying to herself out loud, I've got this, I've got this. And what do you know? Boom. She was landing it. She easily. can do it. And that's yeah. just, just one small example, but that is happening all day long with people in all yeah. areas, whether it's fight camp, training, work, Okay, it's it's take control over this voice. Yep, yep, exactly. How what if you could just say uh, give us one tip, I guess, um, to apply, and you've given us a whole heap of them, um, but one thing that you could uh, give us to apply to the current situation here, obviously in Victoria, being in lockdown, um, a very very strict lockdown. You know, we've got curfew; we yep. can't leave the house after eight pm. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a lot of people that are struggling with that. Um, what could we, what's something, you know, simple that we could maybe implement or change to try and look at this differently and get through it? Cause we've still got another, I don't know, four weeks or something of it left. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the first things I'll do is, is change how you're looking at it. Stop seeing it as that it is happening to you. Start to understand that it's happening for you. You know, start to embrace any challenge that comes. So if the challenge is, well, there are these restrictions, there's this lockdown. Okay, well, this is happening for me. So where's the advantage? Because when you start to look at things and realize that things are happening for you, then you, your mind opens up to start seeing the advantage, seeing the opportunity. Then you're, gonna have to, you're, then you're gonna be able to act on that. Whereas if you're looking at it, oh, this is terrible, this is everything going wrong, you know, that's gonna create, again, these, these poor chemical releases within your body that create a fear state and anxiety. Yep. So it's really, it's changing that. It's, it's, it's changing, again, how you're seeing it. And start to structure your day. You know, have some, have, have some routine within your day. That, that gives you a certainty. You know, one of the biggest things that I work with people on is creating these powerful habits within their day. You know, in order to develop their ability to focus, their, in order to develop their presence. So yeah. I'll go through with people creating powerful habits within their thinking and within their posture and their breathing. Because it's what you focus on and how you use your body that determine how you feel at any time. Yeah. So if you set aside some time each day, okay, within your day and it's structured and you know that at this time I'm doing this, well, that gives you a certainty. You know that it's, you're not just, you know, getting around till 11 or 12 in your pajamas, you know, <laughs> eating, eating I've cheese. I've been guilty of that. <laughs> you know, but this is the thing, it's it, because then it's like, it, it just fuels the uncertainty. Yeah. And that, that's what people are experiencing. It's this, this uncertainty. Well, come back to what you do have control over, which is your own mind and body. Yep. Start to structure your day. Yes, within, you know, the limitations that are there, but that's what discipline is. Discipline is a yep. is chosen limitation. So you can choose right now that, okay, this is happening for me. I'm going to use this, this period to really master my mind. I'm going to stay on top of my, my diet. I'm not going to eat rubbish and drink excessively because yep. that's only going to add to me feeling like shit. Okay. Yeah, that's, only going to, that's, that's only going to unbalance me even more. Yep. And when things are challenging, the last thing you want to do is unbalance yourself more. Okay. So eat correctly. You know, so that you're not putting on weight while you're there at home. You know, breathe correctly, think powerfully. Doing so, doing all of this and creating this structure in your day is going to just set you up that when when it does turn around, and it will turn around. Yeah. Okay. It's it won't last forever. When it does, who are you going to be when things open back up? Are you going to be at your best, or are you going to be? overweight miserable feeling Definitely. like crap because because you've done nothing but you know do you know toxic things excessively yep 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 totally and it makes sense absolute sense yeah mate um what i might do i'm just conscious of the time because i know you've yep. got also another appointment um Guys, we might open it up to some questions. So if anyone's got um, anything they'd like to ask Iggy, whether it be, oh, look, anything, let's just, <laughs> let's open it up. Um, he's not single, so don't ask that question, ladies. <laughs> um, so maybe, yeah, if we want to maybe just pop in the chat box, um, if you've got a question, it doesn't have to be the question, just say me or whatever. Um, and then I'm, I can tell you to unmute yourself so we don't all jump on at the same time. Um, Anything then, yeah. at all? Hey, Dwayne, I can't chat because I'm driving. Sorry, man. Oh, that's all right. Talk. Question. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> um, hey, man, I'm David. Um, you yeah. talked a bit about uh, breathing, and I've had a look at sort of breathing techniques and things like that. Um, and, you know, you can go on forever about breathing, but um, what are the sort of techniques you use just um, for my own knowledge yeah look great question because there is so much confusion out there between around you know breathing techniques and there's this complication of 
of breathing techniques out there where it, it the simpler the better so a very it's you want just equal breath okay equal breaths don't worry about these you know these complicated breathing techniques just becoming aware of how you are breathing will begin to bring you back into a balanced and natural breathing state. So one of the reasons why people don't breathe correctly is because they're not aware of how they're breathing. They're, they're stuck in their head thinking, which again creates that block and that, that trapped energy. So just by noticing your breath, following the breath down, through the solar plexus to the sacral, just below the navel. And then as you exhale, the breath drops out the perineum. That's how the breath is supposed to, to flow. Down, full to low in the, in, the, in the belly, and then out the perineum. It's like when people laugh. <laughs> it's moving the breath out through, low in the body, out through the perineum. That's why it feels so great because there are calming receptors down in the gut that enable you to feel fantastic. Whereas the opposite is the case when people are holding their breath or breathing really shallow, like when people cry, <laughs> it's all this trapped energy up here in the chest. So in answer to your question, it's relaxed, balanced breathing down through the solar plexus to the sacral, and out the perineum. So just that slow, balanced breathing. If you just set yourself to, if you just stood with good posture and took nine slow, equal breaths, and you did that three times a day, this is what I get my clients to do to create this foundation within their posture and breathing. I'll get them just those three times a day. So once in the morning, once in the middle of the day, once in an evening, just to stand in a simple, primal posture and take nine slow conscious breaths. That is a fantastic start. If you do that, you're well on your way. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, wicked. Pleasure. Um, Benjamin, you had a question. Did you want to just unmute yourself and shoot it out, mate? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Oh, sweet. Um, no, thanks for the talk, man. It was, it was awesome stuff. Um, I was just checking, um, I know you say it's a mastery process and you're always learning, but when in your point of life, did you feel like you were ready to then pass on your knowledge to others and make, make, you know, use of everything you've learned to better others? What point in your life did you see that point come around? Yeah, great question. So once I had gotten myself right once i'd gotten balance in in my life and had done so consistently you know over a number of years you know then you know because before that well who's anyone to give any sort of advice to people if they're not living it and this is one thing that oh it's a great question this is one thing that i urge people to do is have a look at who is telling you what to do have a look at who's giving you advice around anything. If they're not embodying it, if they're not living it, don't listen because they obviously don't know. Okay? Yeah. It, it, because knowledge isn't information. Information, you can get all these people that have their, you know, oh, their diplomas in this and their doctorate at this and their, you know, but they're not living it. Their life's in disarray. So that's my advice. Always look at who's saying this. Does it match up? Are they living it? But uh, so does that answer your question? Yeah, hundred percent. No, it's uh, it's what we've noticed a lot in the past pandemic. A lot of people don't actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> so, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But, it's good, no. but good on good on you for picking up on that because often people they don't. They'll look at someone that they see as an authority figure, or you know, they've got a lab coat on, or they've you know, and they'll they'll take it all as gospel. You know, oh, that must be, they, they must, well, no, it's not, you know. So, again, yeah, a great thing to to uh, become aware of. Oh, awesome. Thanks a lot, man. A pleasure, mate. Thank, thanks, Benny. Uh, Matthew, you had a question? Um, how do you or have you experienced and how did you handle 
um, if you ever have um, a, an opponent pulling out of a fight sort of specifically but towards the end of camp when you put all the work in um, how if you have experienced it how did you handle it post the date of the fight yep okay so I definitely have experienced it and on more than one occasion and get over it <laughs> he's got <laughs> you, know, look, you know this is the thing the thing is, you know, these things happen, right? Now, it's a great question. I'll tell you why, because this absolutely applies to life. Now, everything's moving to perfection. Now, that's a principle that I live by. It's not about positive thinking. It's about aligning myself to nature. That's what nature teaches us, is that everything is unfolding in a, in a harmonious way at all times. The only thing that, that sees something as a problem or is going wrong or bad or shouldn't have happened is the the little voice in the head is the is the is the ego so whereas when you look and you realize that no every whether it's an obstacle or a delay it's happening for you it's helping to line things up so again you've got to see the opportunity the opportunity in it and go okay well it wasn't meant to happen well you know why? Why was well? I don't need to know why it wasn't meant to happen right now. It will reveal itself over time. But ultimately, how long are you going to stay focusing on something and you know being upset and disappointed or pissed off about it? It doesn't get you anywhere. So the quicker you can come to a point of acceptance and go, okay, well, you know what? Yep, it's not what I wanted, but on with the show. Yes, does, that answer your, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, and, and people will often say, oh, it's easier said than done. But the thing is, until more is done than said. So it's about yeah. making a practice of it. Again, there's, I'll tell you what, how I learned this was, you know, over long periods of time and, and at first being pissed off, frustrated, oh, this is, but, but then, you know what, man, you end up realizing that it gets you nowhere, that all that does is drain, drain your energy and you end up wasting a whole heap of time. So, you just make that choice that, you know what, on with the show. Bring it on. What's next? Yeah, sweet. Thanks, man. Good on you, mate. Appreciate it. Pleasure. It's awesome. Um, Felicity there had a question, mate. I'll just read it out here. She's just typed in the chat box. Um, what are the things you believe uh, weaken the mind and body? So she's got suggestions like alcohol, spending too much time in front of screens, etc. cetera. Um, I think... Yes, we can say yes, but is there anything specific that you could say perhaps stay away from? Yeah, look, absolutely. So toxic foods, you know, like eating rubbish, drinking, you know, all anything that brings about unbalance. You know, these, these things, you know, when you're having it, they do. They unbalance the body. The gut and brain work together as one. So there's a big nerve that links the gut to the brain. And if the gut is disrupted, if your digestion's out, it throws the mind out. You cannot focus. Now, if you can't focus, you're going to have all of these unconscious thoughts running you. Your mind is going to look for problems. Because if your gut's disrupted, then your brain starts looking for a reason as to why you're not feeling great in yourself. And then it starts seeking out that little part of the brain, the reticular activator, which determines what you focus on, starts seeking out problems and threats to go, that's why I'm not feeling good in myself, because of this. Because this person said this, or because this happened, or because this fight got cancelled last minute. Okay, there's this. That's, it's a technical process. So obviously by fueling yourself correctly, you know, through what you eat and through how you think is going to you know, nourish you in that powerful way. Does that make sense? Yep, does she to said, me. Okay. And so, <laughs> so ultimately, it's, it's any thoughts, you know, thoughts that are weakening you. I can't do this. You know, this is going wrong. This is a problem. I'm no good. Any of those sort of thoughts, it's, it's very clear. If you ask yourself a simple question, sorry, what was the questioner's name? Uh, Felicity. Felicity, if you ask yourself, is this powerful? That's a great, a great way to start. Is this thought adding value to me? 
is this thought powerful? And if it's not, don't think it. Makes sense. All right. <laughs> um, we've got oh, we've got quite a few questions. I'll try and condense a couple um, just to get through them. So uh, we've got a question here. Sorry, guys. Some of these don't have names. I've just got iPhone or Galaxy phone, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to read them out. Um, any particular type of, uh, I think we've kind of covered this, any particular type of diet or food groups that will help reduce fear and anxiety? Yep. Yeah, look, absolutely. So if you go to my website, iggymcgowan.com, and on the services page down the bottom, there's a free ebook around diet. You know, so awesome. jump, jump on there, guys. Download that. It's PDF. It's only short. It's simple. It's the way that I eat, but it's the way that nature intended. So in that, it, uh, if you follow that, it will restore your gut health. Your mind will be clear and sharp. You'll have great energy and... Yeah, so that that would be my recommendation. Jump on there. Yeah, awesome. I'll post the um, I'll post a link to that site um, yep, in you. our groups after the chat. Um, yep. Just quickly, any tips for avoiding procrastination? Get in yeah, and do. Draw, yeah, yeah, do it. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. No, look, it's a good question, but structure, ha having structure. So putting pen to paper. So if you, if you have a diary, I always get people to get an A4 day to a page diary, allocate a time for the tasks that you have to do and hold yourself accountable. When you complete the task, tick it off. Yep. Then go to the next one, tick it off. So on your day, if you've got there and there's five main tasks that you have to get done and you've put a time down for it. So you, you actually set in that intent and then focus simply on that one task until it's completed and tick it off and say to yourself, I get things done. I get things done. Tick it off. Okay. That way, both your thought and your actions are aligning you to that and you get things done because most people have this story in their head. I always procrastinate. I always put things off. And through that, again, my answer to people is, yeah, well, if you say so, because what people do is they create a personality around this idea in their head that, I always put things off. I always procrastinate. So you start to change that. I get things done. I get things done. And then start getting things done. Definitely. Just make it work. Make it happen. Yep. yep. Um, Scarlett, I think Josh had a question. Do you want to just uh, unmute and let him ask if he's about? <laughs> All right. Um, so I just wanted to ask, what would you say the toughest thing for you to get through mentally has been in your life and how, what was the process and how did you get through it? Um, okay. Well, yeah, if I was just to pick out one, um, well, there's, I've definitely given myself quite a number of challenges. This, <laughs> the thing is I, I absolutely had a, I had a very destructive past where you know, which, which I created myself and I was a master of destruction. I was just burn it down. I was just, you know, and, but through that, I, I learned many lessons, but if I was to choose one thing that was, was a, a great challenge, I guess it would be the, my sister's death. So when my sister passed away and, you know, within my mind, I, I helped nurse my sister in the nine months leading up to her passing away. She had melanoma. And so when nursing her through palliative care, I'd be there, you know, for just, I never left the hospital. Like I, I would go just have a shower, then I'd be back there and watching her deteriorate. I was there arguing with it the whole time within my mind. I was there and, you know, trying to change, trying to will somehow myself to change places with her and, you know, going through the, this whole long process, which, I then came to a point through exhaustion of it is what it is. So I then came, I came to this acceptance that, well, it is what it is, but it was through that, that long process of absolutely exhausting myself. So what I learned through that process was, man, that was a waste of energy, that, that in between part that, it's when you just come to this acceptance. Doesn't mean you have to like everything. Doesn't mean you have to, you know, that you would have chosen that. But the thing is, it's accepting that it is what it is, and that then you work with that. 
as opposed to resisting it and working against it. And so that's something that ever since then, ever since my sister passed away, I made that choice that I will live my life powerfully to honor her life. I will, I will be a hundred percent self-sufficient. I will never be a, a problem for, you know, family or anyone else around me. I'll, I'll be absolutely, you know, yeah, self-sufficient. And then, you know, and I'll do that to honor her life and to live my life, you know, to the best I can. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it definitely does. Thank you, man. Good man. Awesome. I think, um, guys, there's quite a few other questions to get through. So what I might do is um, flick him to Iggy offline, um, if you're okay with that, Iggy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, what, is, we might... ask, what is the time, Dwayne? Uh, it's 10 to, 10 to 11. Yeah. Yeah, look, no worries. Look, I just want to say thanks, everyone, that has jumped on. And look, Dwayne, if, if people are interested, we can do this again sometime. And yeah, awesome. you know, to open it up like that because... Look, I'm, I'm thinking of you guys down there in Melbourne and look, it is a challenging situation, but you are up to it. Don't waste this period, okay? You know, so often people, when, when their work is flat out, when there, there's no breaks, people are like, oh, I'll do anything for some time off, I'll do anything for a holiday. Well, guess what? Boom, you've got it, okay? You've got it. It's not how you would have designed it, but it's here and it's happening. So open up to it and embrace it and be a better version of yourself when things turn around, okay? But right now, enjoy how things are. That's awesome, mate. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, I'm sure everyone else, um, yeah, we've got a lot out of it, just judging by the amount of people that's on. We've got nearly 40 people um, and the questions in that. Is it cool um, if, if anyone wants to reach out for um, some, you know, some private help or whatever. Is it cool if we, we send them your way? A hundred percent. Look, yeah, do get in touch, guys. You can, you know, uh, jump on and give me a follow on Instagram, Iggy McGowan, at Iggy McGowan, and uh, on Facebook. But, yeah, you can DM me or send me a message through Messenger. Uh, and, yeah, look, get in contact with me. And anyone that does from, from this talk, I'll give you a, the, a free initial console where, you know, we can discuss where you're at with things. And if you'd like to do some work with myself moving forward, we can absolutely look at that. Awesome. That's brilliant, mate. Thanks so much for your time, Ig. Hey, a pleasure. I'll chat to you soon, mate. buddy. See you guys. Thank Cheers, you. Mate. Thanks, Iggy. Bye. A pleasure. Thanks, bye. See you later. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to move on to... Rocky, let me just see. Um, are you on, Rock? Let's have a look here. Hello. Hey, here he is. How are you, mate? Hey, there he is. Hey, man, how you going? Good, buddy. Good. Good, good, good. How's the, um, the weather up there? It's actually so good. You wouldn't even think it was good. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, mate. It's been raining for the last... Hey? What's that, sorry? I said it's been raining for the last three days straight here. <laughs> I'm lucky, mate. Got to go to Queensland. Yeah, definitely. I shouldn't have left. <laughs> like a summer day, yeah, so good. Yeah. Guys, cool. this is um, this is Rocky Ogden or Lockie Ogden. <laughs> Funny oh. story name. We can probably tell that later. But um, Rocky... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rocky's, um, Rocky's a current WPMF uh, world champion. He's based out of uh, Boonchu Gym, training with John Wayne Parr up in Queensland. Um, he's had, uh, yeah, he's, look, he's had a really um, colourful career in his, in his short time. You're only 20, yeah? Uh, 21. Oh, 21. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my bad. 20. 20. 20. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, mate. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, there's... Look, there's been so many, uh, so many things that we can talk about um, in, in your career that has been um, really positive and that we can, um, that we can relate to, to just general life and the topic of, of today, yeah. which is mindset. Um, I think what I'd like to start probably at the beginning of kind of what got you into, in, into training um, and then um, one of the big things, guys, Rocky spent um, a lot of time over in Thailand 
um, a, as a young boy. Um, let's let's just just talk talk us through that, mate. Yeah. So, I, I, my dad was always in like the taekwondo and stuff when he was younger, in the martial arts, and Muay Thai wasn't as bigger back then, like for the local places. And so he always wanted us kids to be able to defend ourselves and that. So he got we all had to go to taekwondo and learn the way. And he got me into it when I was about nine. And I picked that up pretty quick, enjoyed that a lot. But then got to the point I was kind of just wanted something else. And then then that's when I kind of left that and I wanted to find something a bit more like you get a career out of it and a bit more, you know. And then I found a Muay Thai gym. It wasn't anything big, but it was just a little bit. And yeah, and then I loved that. And then I had a little break and then I finally got back into it when I was a bit older and could understand it a bit more. Yep. And that's when... I met a Thai trainer at Urban. Oh, I moved to Urban. And that's when it, things kind of got the ball rolling. And it was a bit more serious, like Muay Thai style. And then I met Chris and all you guys. And, yep. and that's when it kind of started because he kind of showed me a different level of Muay Thai. And then we kind of hit it off. So after that, he said, I was like, I want to come to Thailand. I was only 16 years old at the time. So he was like, okay, you, you come to Thailand. I'll take care of you. So before I knew it, I was heading over there on my own. Parents all bought, helped me, paid for it, everything. And then, yeah, I was living in Bangkok City with a Thai guy and don't even know what's going on. <laughs> First time of these. And it was just the craziest experience. And then I think I was, I was only there for three weeks and then my first fight there, fighting at Ratchetamnam Stadium. So I think at the time I only had six fights and it was like my first full Thai rules fight. Wow. So it was crazy. So it was kind of like a throw you into the lions like straight away yeah. but but i think it's such a amazing experience because i learned so much from that like learn yeah just learn it's so eye-opening it was crazy. and that was yeah. um you're only 16 weren't you yeah at the time you're 60 yeah yeah so the the thing that amazes me about about you is from from such a young age you were competitively fighting men grown men yeah yeah, yeah? Um, as a, as a 15, 16 year old, um, how do you, how did you kind of prepare yourself? Cause obviously stepping in the ring is daunting for anyone, let yeah. alone, let alone a, a boy, a teenager, yeah. um, standing in front of a, a grown ass man. How did you, yeah. how did you, how did you prepare yourself? Well, I shit myself to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, I bet. But when your coach is a, they, they help you a lot. They, if they, you got to trust your coaches. I think it's the biggest thing. So if, if you do that and then you kind of, you have confidence, but you're a little bit scared as a kid. But I think as a kid, you don't really, you never really know. You think you're going to go on there and these, you know, men like at the time, usually just, you think you're just going to go on there and just overpower us with your muscle, blah, blah, blah. But I always just try to stay positive and train as hard as I can. And then I think it wasn't until I really got it and actually just did it. And I was like, oh, shit, I, I can fight these people. And that's another yeah. level of confidence. And after that, because you're like, I'm fighting grown men. And, and you're standing across from them. I've barely got muscles, so I'm still young and developing, <laughs> little boy. And they're like, just ripped. And it's like, oh, shit, I'm going to get killed. Yeah. But then you start fighting, you throw a couple of punches. And you're like, oh, shit, I'm hitting this guy and it's hurting him. And then, yeah, it just becomes normal then. Then it becomes you can't fight young people because you're already fighting men. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember um like any any particular fights or points in fights where you were standing against a man and you know shitting yourself, and then all of a sudden you're teeing off on him, you're scoring him, you're tagging. How did that kind of make you feel like at, at the time? You know, I think it was uh, in Australia. There was an Asian guy. I think Bruce Cavani ages ago and he was I think he tried to really use his like tried to scare me a lot with his eyes and do all this silly stuff but I've always tried to I don't believe in all that stuff you know like because it's once you start fighting it, none of that matters it's all about what you do your technique and everything yep. but yeah it's kind of it's a weird one I think once you're fighting it all kind of goes away because it's just you and him so then yep. once you start making contact and hurting him it's just about what I do next what are the trainers telling me to do so yeah, it just just becomes a fight then, and now Definitely. yeah, it's just normal. When um when you moved to Thailand, because you you lived in Thailand for what three four years? Yeah, four years. Yep. 
Tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, uh, the, the living conditions, the training, the coaches, because I think um, in Australia, we're spoilt. Um, yeah. fighters, fighters, fighters say they have it tough, but they don't have it tough. Um, tell us a little bit about, about that, mate. So, yeah. So, I've been... I've trained with a couple of different traders in Thailand, but it was like the same family. So, I started off with Pick and them guys, and that wasn't so hard, but he definitely taught me a lot of like... Yeah, that, he taught me so much about like the Thai culture and all that, and it really set me on my way of learning. So, I was sleeping on wooden floors, eating with the tires, sit on the floors, some nights, oh, I just, and even before I went to Thailand, I couldn't even eat any spicy food. And it was like, there, you got no <laughs> choice. To, yeah, <laughs> I was a pussy. And then you get, once you're there, you got no choice. And now I love it, but it wasn't, wasn't until I really went to sanctions where that was about two years in. Yep. And that was just a next level. That was out in the country. And that's like, they are, it's a make or break gym. I think any fighters that wanna, they think they wanna be fighters and that's what they wanna do for their life, you need to go somewhere like that to see if that's what you wanna do. Cause it's hell showering in buckets of water. There's yeah. disgusting, but it's more like mental. You just gotta train your mind. Like just, I don't know, you turn into like a different, that's crazy. So like they, they always do little things like to try to push you over the edge and and make you cry and yeah, if you really, because yeah. those parts of training to little kids and they're they're so strong, they're mental, or they just have to be. You keep it inside at least. But even yeah, saying, yeah. always, 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 they're yelling at you. They get their little stick whipping you. So I think until you go there and really experience the real culture, it's just next. It's the next level. I tell next everyone level. you need to go somewhere like that just to to see if you want to be a fighter because. It's not easy when you get something like that. But I think without that, I wouldn't be the same fighter for sure. Like, no way. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Um, hey, um, tell us a little bit about, so your, your um, world title, you, you picked that up at 18 years of age, which is what, two, yeah. three years ago. Um, tell us a little bit about the, um, the lead up to that, mate, because you won that over a tie. Um, and you, yeah. I, I know you've, you've fought plenty of ties now in your time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, tell us a little bit about the, the lead up to your title fight um, and the, the feeling of achievement afterwards. Yeah, hey, so about a couple of weeks before that, I fought, so I fought this guy, I fought the guy twice that I fought for the belt. I fought him on Top King and we had a, okay. we had a really good fight, a close fight, and I just got the win. But we believe we won, but they, they disputed it, but they didn't think they... They, they think they should have won. So then there was a promoter there that was taking care of me. I think it was my fourth fight with Sanction at the time. Uh, I like I've never lost a fight with Sanction out of I think 10 fights. So yeah, I, was, I was on a little winning streak, a four fight winning streak. And the promoter, I think he did like the council or whatever. Um, and he was watching and he said, oh, yeah, let's make a rematch. As you know, so I was back at the gym and the same, he's like, do you want to have a, a boxing fight or something just to stay active? I was like, okay, I'll get back into it. And then he, the next day comes down and says, Lockie, uh, okay, I got the news. We can do no boxing fight or you can, and you can do like a world title fight. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like, it's a, when you hear it for the first time, it's a crazy experience. And, like, and it's like, you're rematching this guy. And then it was, I think that was my... Sick, my first day just having a break after the fight, recovering and that. And I was straight, they chucked me straight back on the pads, just smashing me again. I was like, oh, fuck. The energy I got, no one else fighting for the belt was like next level because that's, that's yeah. all I've worked for my whole life. So I was straight back out running and I was just the biggest buzz. And then I think I had a three week trip for that. And then yeah. cause I was still pretty fit from the last fight. I wasn't drinking yeah. after thing, straight back into it. And then Sangman was really pushing me. We were doing, oh, so he, they like to do like homework at his gym. So you do a hectic three hour session and then whatever your opponent's style is, it might be like 20 minutes straight just on pads or just if you south for you, right block, right kick, you know, whatever it is, just to make sure you're prepared for when you fight them. Yep. And yeah, morning, it might be 30 minutes straight. It was absolute hell, but, but then it's all worth it then when you get in there and, you get that belt wrapped around you. So, but yeah, like 
it's always such a surreal experience when you finally win that belt. It was crazy. It's worth the goods, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a cool um, yeah, mate, that's it, it's amazing, and at such a young age too. Um, how how old was your opponent? What was, was his name? Okay. Nineteen twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. But he would have been fighting since he was five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, they're stronger than men, like some men. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Um. <clears throat> let's um. Let's talk about your your most recent fight. Um, on one with um, with Sam A. So um, for anyone that doesn't know, um, Sam A has been around um, for a long, long time. He's a very accomplished fighter. Um, and to to stand in front of him, yeah, you want to stand in front of him, but at the same time, you'd be shitting bricks because you know what he's accomplished. Yeah, um, he's been beaten. So like, Holy yeah, shit. 100%. Yeah. Um, tell us, mate, a little bit about, I guess, um, when you got the call up from one, um, how, like how, how you felt um, and then a little bit about I guess the mental prep that you would have had to go through um, to jump in the in the cage with Sam yeah so actually at the time I wasn't training or anything I was on a, like a seven month break because when I was at sanctions in Thailand I've had, I had a stress fracture on my L5 oh, and right. in Thailand there's no there's no like Oh, you saw? Okay, have a break. It's, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You mention it and you're a pussy or something, you know? So it's yeah. just always just go, 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 go. Strong as you can, strong mentality. And then I was like, okay, I need to really set, like, stop and just let this heal while I'm young. Otherwise, I'm going to have a, my back's going to be screwed when I'm older. And then it was so weird because this guy was trying to contact me, the, the one of the promoters that goes and scouts out all the fighters. And Wayne's like, oh, someone... Someone's contacting me for you to find on one. You need to check your messages. I'm like, oh, okay. And I check the messages and it's like, we got uh, a massive opportunity for you, but a massive task. And I was like, oh, shit. Wow. And it's next month on the 20th of whatever it is. And then I was like, okay, I'm keen. What is it? And he's like, hey, we want you to fight for the world title against Salme. I was like, what the? Like, how is yeah. this happening? <laughs> like, oh, it's crazy how the universe is. Oh, it's... But, it was one of those things like, how could you turn that down? Like, like hey, what, what, have, what have I got to lose? I've I'm had half this, oh, less than half, you know, how many fights there? Like 400 fights, about 40. Yeah. So, so you, so you just got to go in and give it your 100% effort. Like, what do you got to lose? You get knocked out, it's against MA. You win, you're a superstar. But as long as you go in there Absolutely. and fight as hard as you can. So, if, Wayne was very confident too. We always had, I said, what do you think? He's like, okay, let's do it. You know, like, but to be honest, I fought so many tires in Thailand that have had that many fights or two. So it wasn't that hectic, but yep. it was still a big step up because it's Sam, eh? like, he's just, yeah. He's like, you go on you, um, Google and type in, like, greatest fight, it comes up. And these are people that I watched and study when I was learning in Thailand. So it was like, holy shit, I got to fight these people now. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to get into it. But I just wish Amazing. I had a bit more time to have a couple of fights and get back into it, get the ring rust and that out. And then yeah. Get back. Hey. Well, seven months, seven months is a long time off in between yeah, um, yeah. fights, particularly to come up against someone like that. Um, it wasn't the first time that you fought in a cage, though, because you fought on CMT, yeah. didn't you? Once or twice? Yeah. 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 Um, what was it like, I guess, fighting on one? It's crazy. It's just different. It's so there's so much, especially for this fight, because it was straight for the belt. The amount of media and everything I had to do it was actually a little bit less because of COVID and that going on. So a lot of stuff got cancelled. Yeah. Man, it was every day you go do this interview, this interview. There they got this schedule. You got to go do this, that. So it's, it's crazy. If it's like the real deal, but it's what we thought we want those fights. You don't want to just work your way and just fight nothing. So to give the Muay Thai guys an opportunity like this. It's so good for us. But yeah, one Absolutely. championship, this, this is the best. It's so sick. When I wish I was a crowd there. That stuff with no crowd. It would have. Yeah, it was weird. You could hear every little thing when you fight. Your breath, you could hear. The, oh, it's so weird. But I just can't wait to get back in and do it again on one. I just hopefully that next time there's a crowd there. That'll be sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I just wanted um, to find from all those people. And oh, definitely. Up. It would have been amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. What, um, Rock, what would you say to, um, say to let's say, um, someone who's um, thinking about having their first fight? How, what would you, if you could give them a bit of advice, what would you say? I'd say you got to understand what you're doing. It's not like a game of football or soccer or like a, playing poker or you know what I mean? Like you're going to be hitting each other and you're fighting. So you've got to be, be aware of that and you can get hurt. But I say, make sure you're confident in training first. Make sure your coaches are confident. You look at who your opponent is. You're going in there. Not, you're not just going to get smashed for your first fight. You know what I mean? Yep. So if, if you're at training, you're getting hit and scared and that you, you should not be getting in there. You should be confident, ready to go fit, strong, and yeah, training hard at least. That, yep. that helps a bit. <laughs> but yeah, but honestly, I think you need to get in there and have the first one, get it out of the way. I think that helps a lot because it's such a, as so many people train so long and then it's such a big build up. Like, oh, what's going to happen from the first fight? And they get yeah. in and go, oh, you, and half the time they can't even control what they're doing because their nerves yep. just take off. Yeah. That's the biggest thing with it is learning your composure and that. Like, but yeah, but I, I'd say do it. You'll love it. Hopefully, if you win, maybe. <laughs> and don't get hurt. How um how is it training um in uh, at, training out of Bunchu with um with Wayne? Obviously, he's a like the most accomplished um, Aussie yeah. fighter and, and and worldwide fighter, um, certainly one of. Um, tell us a little bit about what it's like to to train with Wayne and and does he give you any um really good tips or nuggets that that you could share um, with the guys today yeah so it was actually me and wayne kind of just hit it off we're kind of got a very similar stuff happened to us to, like in thailand and our career so somehow before i even met wayne i ended up going with the same one of us so pick was the son of wayne's trainer back when he lived in thailand Paul Manu. And this is, this is like a little, tiny little gym where they don't even show you nothing. It's a little secret betting gym. And somehow I got trained with him. And that's how I came back to Pick to Australia. And Pick said, okay, we'll set up a lunch and we'll go see Pick. Ah, oh, go see Wayne, sorry. Because he hasn't seen him in years. So I set that up. Yep. And then before I know it, me and Wayne are chatting. And he goes, hey, do you want to fight in CMT? And then I was like, yeah, this is a job yeah. I have. <laughs> this is like, and like the bros, like. And then, yeah, before I know it, I was training with him twice a day. And, yeah, the rest is history. But to have someone that's been there and done, this, like, the proper way, like, just the, the most purest way, I think, to do it. Yep. Like, the hard gym in Thailand, especially back in the day then, no phones, no nothing. Like, and the training that he had was absolutely insane. Like, uh, but, yeah, but Wayne shares a lot, especially bringing his boxing out on board as well. Helps me a lot. And yep. very technical, so yeah, there's, there's so much, you know. Like, but he teaches a good, good mindset and consistency. Like when we train, we train hard, morning, afternoon, you know, no laziness. You got to get up, you got to do your work, otherwise yep. you cheat yourself. That's the biggest Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. You, so I say, do 100 knees on the bag. You do 60, and you go to the trainer. Oh, I did it. I did 100, but you know you didn't. You know, at the end of the day. It's not going to affect me, but when you get in the ring, it's just you and that guy, you know what I mean? So whatever you do at training comes back on you. So you got to really push your own self because, yeah, Definitely. there's no there's no lying once you're in there. Your trainers can't help you once you're in the ring. I yeah. mean, it's just you and that guy. But yeah, it's hard. You just got to, yeah, never want to cheat yourself. That's a big thing. There you well, go, yeah. guys. <laughs> no cheating. Um, <laughs> Mate, we might um, we might open it up to the guys to fire a couple of questions out at you, um, just about yeah. about anything about your fight career, about you know um, training with training in Bunchu, training in Thailand. Um, guys, fire away! Just uh, same as we did with Iggy, just pop a few questions or just just your name or whatever in the chat box, and I'll I'll throw the convo over to you. Um, uh, we've got a question from Daniel. Just unmute yourself, um, Dan, and, and fire it away, mate. Yeah, um, hey, I just wanted to know, um, moving away from home to like a really foreign place at such an early age, how how did that affect you? And were you ever like 
scared of like being so far from home and stuff like that? Yeah, 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 definitely. But you gotta, you gotta be. Of, of course, you miss home and you miss your family. But you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing, what you're in for. And I knew what I wanted to be and where I wanted to go. So you gotta know. That's what, that's what I say with this. Like, you gotta give it 100% effort. If you want to go somewhere like fighting or something, and um, you can't just uh, go around, play around, like, and go. Like, so many people go for sanctions or hard gyms over in Thailand. They'll, they'll come there for a week. And before, you know, they got their plane ticket home. So I think as much as you miss coming back and that, you just got to keep that strong mentality and just stick it out. And then it'll all be worth it in the long run. And yeah, you just get a different level. You'll be stronger, for sure. Thanks. Really good. Uh, over to Brittany. Hi, Rocky. Um, uh, quickly, what was your most memorable fight? So, I'd probably say it's a hard one. The world title one was a cool one because it's a world title. And oh. winning it in front of the princess and all those, like, you know, the big people in Bangkok. And the winner fight in Bangkok is, I think, is the best way to win a, like, a belt. But like, it's pretty hard because Sam A is such a legend. So that was an amazing fight him. Would have been a lot better if I beat him and got the bell. <laughs> and then I would have been able to just say, oh, that's my favorite one, you know. But yeah, yeah it's out of those two. Maybe maybe Sam A, because as is just Sam A, you know, that's a cool fight. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Nick. Good night, mate. How's it going? Um, I've got mate. a question for you. Um, I think I heard you correctly. You said you had a stress fracture in your L5 um, and yeah. had seven months off. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did you do? Did you still train or did you dial down and train in a bit or did you have full seven months off? Yeah, so before that, I've had it prior, like about two years. So I was training up for two years and I just kept building up to the point where it was just too much and I had to come home from Thailand and just get it fixed. So the doctor said if you overdo it, you can get like, I slip this or something like that and you get like a bulge back. And I was like, I don't want that. So they said, just stop now and let it heal. So yeah, I was, I was still training a little bit. So you gotta, you gotta work on like strengthening your glutes and your core a bit. That's like helps your posture. And yeah, if you can strengthen the muscles around it, that's like the main part. They can like, it's all just, yeah, getting that stronger to support you back. But yeah, definitely stay fit. Just make sure you don't overdo stuff to, have you got a stress fracture? I no, 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 I was just wondering, like, uh, with injury, like, just in injuries in general. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you just, you just like, it. fully cut everything or you're just working around it? No, no. So, yeah, you just see a physio or someone, they'll definitely, like, they'll get you on your little path. But I think cutting everything is, like, not the way to go. Yeah, Try yeah. to stay active because active, I think, is healthiest. If you just stop everything, then your body just seizes up probably. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Definitely. Um, over to you, Manny. Um, hey, um, just want to know because you fight uh, with the one championships. Um, have you ever had a chance to sort of interact with Elaine the Panther Niglani? So can you say it one more time? Couldn't quite hear that. Yeah, sorry. Because you fight at one championships. Yeah. Have you ever had a chance to interact with this uh, fighter named Elaine Niglani uh, from Cameroon? No, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I got, I don't think I did, no. Okay. So, oh, that well, that was a nice quick one, Manny. Thank you. <laughs> um, I couldn't quite uh, hear the name of the book. Hey? I couldn't quite hear the last of it, interact with someone. Um, Elaine, Elaine uh, Nolani, Galani, the Panther. Oh, no, no, no. It was, I think it was a bit restricted for this. Even family and that wasn't even allowed to come in. So it was kind of like you got to get get stuff done and then you fight. Then you're out, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, that was cool. Hey, we got we got the like, have a little chat with Chatri and stuff. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's great. Is he is he a nice guy? So Chatri guys is the um, he's the owner of um, One and um, yes. Evolve MMA in Singapore. Yeah. Um, so he seems. Yeah, sorry, you go, mate. No, you're right. I was just going to say, he seems like a really down-to-earth guy for, yeah, for yeah. someone in that position, yeah. Yeah, well, 
So it was weird. Like before the fights, he comes and gives like everyone a big motivational speech. And when he's doing that, it's like full on and scary because he gets right into it, like full serious. And then next minute, that's done. Comes out the back, and he's like, "Hey, bros, what's going on?" Bro? I was like, oh, <laughs> "What's going on?" I'm like, but yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's just. I think he's just so smart what he's done. But yeah, he's a good guy. Nah, top can... bloke. Top bloke. Uh, who else have we got? We've got um, uh, Toby. Yeah. Um, hey, Rocky. Um, my question is, um, I, t- I tend to like um, struggle when it comes to my diet. Do you have any tips for like someone who's really trying to focus on their diet? Like, is there like um, a way just to, um, have you got a trick that like keeps you on track with it? Or is it just in my head? Yeah, yeah. You just, you just got to understand, like, the benefits from it. You're going to look better, feel better. And like, you just, once you can get past the stage of, like, the cravings and, like, it's like even when I start dieting again, if I go to fight, you get to a point where it's like, oh, I just want to, I just want to have that little bit of this, little bit of that. If you just can cut that off, you know, and you just, eventually it just becomes, like, normal. You just start eating healthy. And... I find like if you you don't need to go hectic on diet. I think you just need to eat clean, healthy foods. Like watch your style, watch your style, watch your proportions, all like that. And then that way you can you're not starving or you're not craving so much stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, just get good food, good veggies, good meat. And yeah, all right. I like my Thai food, so I'm just like a rice and meat type of guy. But yeah, so yeah, look, you can find some diets in there, but try to eat pretty often too to get your metabolism going. And if you're training too, you need the energy. But yeah, but yeah, just you can do it. I believe in you. Stay focused, Cheers, mate. <laughs> ah, you mate. Thanks, Toby. Um, Katarina. Hi. Um, I was just wondering what your biggest mental hurdle is, um, or was as a fighter, like the biggest thing you've had to overcome mentally. I think. The biggest thing is like every fight, like it doesn't get easier like when you get to the level because every guy you're fighting is better and better. So you need to just always, it's really hard one. You just gotta, for me to be honest, I don't, I'm not scared of fighting anyone, but I just hate like losing and the disappointment of, I feel like everyone's so disappointed in you. So getting over that as well and, and just like not killing yourself over, or not killing yourself, but like, just going crazy over a loss, like moving on from understanding why you lost. And yeah, moving on from that, improve and then come back stronger. So you just gotta keep your head clear and don't don't overthink the little things, you know? So yeah, just try to stay, yeah, it's a hard one. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna hand over to um, Emma. Let me just preface this with, um, so this question uh, is about your your training, Rocky. And for those of you that don't know, um, Rocky's partner is Jazzy Parr. So Wayne, his coach, um, <laughs> his daughter, okay? Um, so Emma, fire away, mate. Hey, Rocky. Um, I was just wondering, with you and Jazz both having fighting careers, have you struggled or found any hurdles with managing that and both, um, training at the same facility or gym at the same time? Yeah. To be honest, no, we actually, it's actually really fun. Like, I feel like it's better in a way because you, they, she understands that I'm in training camp, like not to like, cause I feel like it's hard when you fight it cause you've got to stay very focused. So sometimes other girlfriends or boyfriends, they won't understand it quite as much. They, why are you staying here? Why are you not going out doing this? So I think it's good when you're both focused and you, you build together and get stronger together. But yeah, so far there's nothing wrong. And it's hard when Wayne's in the gym. You know, I can't... <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, I can imagine. <laughs> no, I love it. I love, we love training together. It's really fun. It's good. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, um, just to pick your brain a little bit on that, because I think it's funny. Did you... <laughs> Did you and Jazzy get together before you were training at Boonshu or after? Oh, no, no, no. So, well, like, I was pre- I'm pretty close with their family before that. Okay, and yeah. 
yeah, kind of just something that built up. And it was only eight months ago, now, eight months we started dating. But yeah, but okay. now we've known each other for three years now. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of in the family. I hope. It's there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now it's perfect. It's good. No, that's awesome, mate. Everyone well, always wants to ask Wayne these questions. It's like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll mate, I'll bet. Me. At one, they did. I was like, no, I hate this. It's the worst. <laughs> Throw me under the bus. Uh, Ah, yeah, good. well, you'll be right, mate. You'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, thank you so much for jumping on and sharing your yeah, stories awesome. with us. Um, I, I know the guys would have got heaps out of it. And um, majority of people who follow the fights um, follow you with, with a great amount of interest. Um, have you got anything lined up uh, for the future that we can look out for or not? nothing on the, on the cards yet? So, Chachu is still... He said he's going to make an announcement soon for like one and that. But so far, yeah. I haven't got anything like overseas, obviously, because everything <laughs> going on. But I might have a fight in uh, 31st of October. If everything okay. goes well, awesome. like in Australia and Queensland. Yep. So if everything goes well and COVID doesn't go crazy here again. So yeah, I might have another fight. And Beautiful. Again. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, again, I just want to keep going. Hate like fight and stop. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like have some more fight, entertain everyone. For sure, They're very very entertaining <laughs> um, to watch and even to train. Might might I add, like um, you know, you you always had so much energy in the gym and just no nonsense. Come in, head down, work and work and work. And yeah. Work. And that's that's yeah, the way you fight. Yeah. yeah. That's that's all in the head that you do. You stay positive, you have fun at training, but train hard, you know? Train hard, like, yeah. ahead. You just got to take control of your brain and, yeah, and everything comes together then. That's it, mate. Well, thanks, man. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Well, I um... I, stuff out of it. Yeah, yeah, I think thanks, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Sunday. Thanks, Rocky. Thanks, guys. You too. <laughs> thanks, Rocky. Cheers, See you. Mate. We hope you all got some value out of today's session with Iggy and Rocky. For anyone that would like to hit either of the guys up for further info, ask any more questions, or even just to follow their careers, we'll post some links under this video on their socials and also Iggy's website, iggymcgowan.com. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next one.